Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Isabel and I'm terribly sorry for the delay in this video. I don't feel very well. I have a sore throat. It's early in the morning, but I already took a shower. I have my cup of tea. I'm ready to talk about a very disturbing book. I'll be talking about Bunny by Mona Awood, which is a novel from 2019. The way Bunny arrived to my radar, as I am sure most of you will have the same experience, is through Instagram and under the category of dark academia. Dark academia is not a serious category as a in genre form. So I want to bring your attention to how Bunny is categorized before we even go into details of what it is about and my opinions. Bunny can be shelved under fiction and dark comedy. I think we should focus on dark comedy as a way of explaining Bunny and what does Bunny do. Bunny is a self-critical, ironic novel. Everything that the main character complains about, grad school and academia and the group of women that she calls the bunnies, that is something that she falls under as well. So she doesn't have that foresight to see that she is falling into this group, that she is following onto these biases and that she does the same thing and that her internal monologue or what we get to read from her is the same that she complains about other people's writing. If you read Bunny, you're going to get a lot of description, but very fast paced shock value moments. And it's the same thing that Samantha complains about when she reviews the Bunny's works. They bring up fairy tale tropes, just like Bunny does with Alice in Wonderland. And they're focused on gender and women and the body, just as Bunny is. There is where I think about when I think about dark humor, as if it's not self-aware, but it is. If you catch it, then you cannot unsee it. If you look at the cover of Bunny, you will see that Margaret Atwood publicly endorsed the novel and that she participates and she goes, oh, Bunny, as speaking to Mona Awad, as if they're all within the same group, as if we're all part of the clique. I also find this very interesting because we do see in several dark academia books that there is a common trope of cliques, elitism, and the small groups of people with secrets. So Margaret Atwood and Mona Atwood bringing in this to the outside world as we are the bunnies or we participate into the bunny strategy or we participate with the bunnies. It also brings to light this very common thing for academia, and for the literary spheres in general. Now we can move past the cover and we can move past the genres and how I arrived to the novel and we can talk about what is this novel about. As I said, our main character is Samantha. She's a scholarship student who was very precautious on a young age. She wrote with a passion that she has been missing since it's her time to almost go into her thesis writing mode and she's not writing anything but she is in a very prestigious creative writing program. She shares her workshop with the bunnies. It's a group of women who are very wealthy, very pretty, and who participate in these intense meetings and intense hugs, and they all call each other bunnies. She had this encounter with wealth for a moment when her father or had a lot of money and then he didn't and that is so interesting for her character because that is what brings her to envy the bunnies but the first thing that she noticed about them is their embraces but also just their wealth so bunny is not only about gender as most people focus on but the clear distinction and conversation about wealth and the unequal distribution of wealth and class and how it takes place in college campus. It's a common thread throughout the book that Samantha is always very aware about and it's something else that deconstructs through the novel. Um, as a side note, I feel like Bunny gives me 2012, 2010 vibes. I don't know why, there's no, well, I guess it's the mention of Twee and the way that these people talk, the rewriting of fairy tales, the focus on female friendship, clearly internalized misogynism that it is in there through Samantha and the other bunnies. I feel like it screams 2010, 2012, but I might be wrong. And the language used by Mona Awood is very deliciously made. It is enjoyable and it starts off very erotic, fantastic, 
sensuous, and a bit monstrous. The descriptions of the embraces focus on their mouths, the rosy, their beating hearts, the hot skin, the short dresses, the glossy hair. It is, and they, they all tangle to make a beast. They all merge in these hugs as if they're about to die. And those descriptions of embraces are the most erotical moments that ever happened in Bunny. Like the inclusion of heteronormativity and the men that are involved in the novel later on cannot compare to this description of female friendship, which again, this is a novel with a lot of female connection. It is the heart of the novel. Samantha has a best friend and this best friend comes to a complicated plot twist towards the end, but she also reminds her that she is cosplaying as poor or not cosplaying as poor but she is always very aware so the only reason why she will act like that is because she used to have money and now she doesn't class conversation and economic conversation apart samantha acts as if she hates the bunnies but of course she is entranced by them she wants to know what they do what do they talk about how do they met like all of this information she wants to be part of their secret club even if she denies it is also very interesting how in her description of them she objectifies them she sees them as a cupcake as a doll and the way that she sees them is very passive very for her to take as if she is the one choosing not to take them on even though they are the ones who exclude her that imbalance and that back and forth of are they excluding her or is she the one deciding not to be with them comes into play at the plot twist and the dynamics and i don't want to bring any spoilers because i feel like the only way you can enjoy this book if you don't know anything about this book because of its shock value but the bunnies create people through animals that's their big secret that's what they do and this magical element this power is never fully explained it's not explore how they start doing it but it comes kind of like of inner strength and the reason why they come together and they become the bunnies is because they need the strength in them samantha gets invited to be with the bunnies but even when she's part of them it is obvious that she is not like them and we get to explore why is that the case and why it kind of div it kind of revolves around mental and inner strength. Are you familiar with Mona Awood's novel that came after Bunny, All's Well, which is also dark academia, but it is and also happens in a college campus. It is focalized through a professor. I think that the ending and the storytelling of All's Well is clearly superior than the one in Bunny. As I said, Bunny relies a lot on shock value and when you're exhausted yourself of all of these shocking moments and you look back, you're like, sure, that happened. But it doesn't, it does, it didn't make me marvel at it, at the storytelling because nothing was really explained and nothing was really important either. Now I want to talk about how Bunny critiques academia because it is interesting, as I said in the beginning of the video, that we arrived to this novel through lists of dark academia books or academic settings for novels, and we, are re and we reach a novel that so clearly mocks academia. Like behavior, elitism, and class privilege all come together in Bunny in very straightforwardly. We have the story and the themes, and the shock value but then underneath we have expose on academia if we look critically at those workshops in the stories that the bunnies and samantha turn in they're bullshit <laughs> and they try to mask that by being like you're just not intellectually inclined or you're just not sophisticated enough to understand this and samantha and you as a reader go like, yeah, no, I 
I am enough. This is just some bullshit that you're coming up with. Well, parts of Bunny are also written like that. I don't think it is a fault at Mona's Alwood style, but she is trying to incorporate that in and make it ironic to make Bunny feel like it was written by Samantha to make it feel like it was written by a bunny. The adorn language, the name dropping, and we have this fever dream language that is kind of speaking with the same voice. Now, if you like this style of writing, that doesn't mean that you're a fake intellectual or anything like that, but this reads as something that would be turned in into this class. For example, I laughed out loud when Samantha was talking about the body and how everyone is so obsessed with the body and fragmentation and digestion because that was my same experience going into university. When you start going to these literature seminars, you start you realize that aura means something very specific. <laughs> that deconstruction means something specific and people just start using these concepts almost as currency because knowledge is cultural capital and this is a very important currency in this academic sphere so you need to show up who knows more literary terms who can use them in regular conversation but the majority of people wouldn't understand them outside of academia well Bunny brings us into this very limited space, this closed circle that has apparently the same understanding when you say the body that other people wouldn't get. It is something that they gatekeep to use language as a way of domination or to make them look like intellectuals. Yet the ironic part comes that if you were to do a close reading analysis on Bunny, you could say that it's a novel about the body and about creation of bodies and merging of bodies and that the female body takes this position as the creator. And the conversation about the body is not only a critique to academia and to the topics that we kind of go around and around and we talk obsessively about, but it also is, Bunny is the story of the body because the concept of the body is that people live in these vessels and how do you present the vessel and how can the vessel be fragmented, right? And how it can be reproduced. What is organic, what is artificial, yada, yada, yada. Well, the story revolves around making vessels, but how do you turn from a vessel? How do you turn a vessel into an actual human? Like that power, that Genesis story of God making the man and then just like, and then breathing in the air and giving them a soul. That same creational myth comes back into Bunny and these women that make humans and, and how these women that want to make humans, but they only make vessels. So it's a really full circle moment when you think about it because Mona Awood could have or make fun of any other theme, but he makes, but she makes fun of the body because she is participant of making a story about the body. So yes, full moment, we love to see. It seems straightforward and the parts that I think about when I look back on my reading of Bunny is not, oh, I still think about the story, the storytelling, the plots, the character up. I really don't. As I said in my wrap up video, that is me with all's well, which I think is better. Like everything that Mona Awood wanted to do here in Bunny gets done better over there. And it has another layer of complexity, probably just as her skills as a writer get better and better with time. But Bunny leaves you thinking, huh, that seems like a fever dream and I'm not sure what happened but I keep going back and back to that criticism and thinking of moments that were not for the plot, but seem to be there for the criticism of academia, which I'm all for. You know, I am in academia. I am on board. I'll be your future professor in like 10 years. But being in Samantha's place, 
like someone that also comes as a foreigner to these types of faces, there's a lot of overlap with my experience and the one that she is portraying there, yet she falls into those same patterns, middle and end of the novel, which is also very interesting if you look at it as how we end up being what we claim to hate. If you want to read Bunny, I think you should do October because spooky season is coming and there are a lot of weird and almost grotesque moments. So if you need a trigger warning, if you don't like anything that is too explicit or you don't like novels that don't have a very specific definitive ending, maybe Bunny is not for you. I would recommend All's Well by Mona Outwood over Bunny, but to each their own. You can watch my review of All's Well here in this channel somewhere. I'll probably leave a link. Maybe it's because I'm sick, but I feel more dizzy now. <laughs> Maybe it's because I am sick, but I feel more dizzy now that I'm thinking about Bunny and how the plot is connected because it feels very fast paced but not a lot of things happen and you wonder if a lot of things that take place in the novel actually happen or were samantha's imagination which i feel it is part of the purpose i think it's part of what Awood was trying to accomplish there so if you really want to get the full experience i would recommend you read it all in one go it's very easy to read so that is all from me i have no idea how long i've been talking and i might have been all over the place so i hope i can fix that in the editing of this video thanks for watching thanks for being patient i hope you like the video if you have read Bunny or you're going to have it in your Dark Academia list for October and November, please let me know. And if you have any other recommendations for Dark Academia, Dark Academia at Jason, uh, tell me all about them. Because I really want to reread The Secret History, but I would also be open to just reading a new one. Thanks for watching. Keep reading. And when you're not, follow me on all my social media. Link down below. My name is Isabel. Bye.